Well, Colombia's presidential candidates are making their final appeals to voters. Five men are vying to become the next leader. Observers suggest the result could determine the fate of a 2016 peace agreement that ended a 50-year-long guerrilla war. CGTN's Toby Muse is in Bogota. Toby, what are you hearing from prospective voters? When you speak to voters here in Colombia, you get the sense of a deeply polarized uh, electorate. The economy isn't growing fast enough for a country as poor as this with so many millions of people in poverty. There's a uh, sense that the country is uh, drowning in corruption, and that's tending to benefit the two most extreme candidates. On the left wing, we have Gustavo Petro, but on the right wing, we have Ivan Duque. Now, what's important about Ivan Duque is that he has pledged to overhaul the historic peace process that was signed between the Colombian government and the FARC in 2016. Let's take a listen. If right-wing candidate Ivan Duque becomes president of Colombia, he has promised to keep the country's peace process in place, but he and his supporters want to see some major changes. The peace process uh, will be kept, but of course we need to make uh, uh, some changes. Duque wants to see stiffer punishments for the FARC leadership and bar them from running for political office. At least in the transitional justice, go to jail at least from five to eight years. The head of the guerrilla say they would never do that. So what kind of peace is that? Instead, they are going to Congress. As part of the peace deal, the FARC was given a small number of seats in Congress and will face a justice tribunal although most believe the leadership will not spend any significant time in prison. Supporters of the peace accord fear the Central Democratico may attempt to undermine the agreement entirely. One prominent member of the party talked of ripping up the peace deal completely. The government and the FARC say it must remain as it was negotiated. El acuerdo se firmó. The deal was signed with the country, not with one particular government. Both point out the constitutional guarantees included no modifications. But if Duque were to take power, he could alter the peace process by changing the constitution itself. Antonio Navarro Wolf, a supporter of the peace deal, believes the process could survive minor changes. But if it was gutted to include imprisoning top leaders, he says thousands of lower-ranking ex-guerrillas could return to the mountains. They have a place to go, and they could begin growing cocaine again. So they would have homes and money, which could bring a new period of conflict. And as this election campaign is going on in Ivan Duque and the Centro Democratico Party is talking about overhauling the peace deal, at the same time, the current government is trying to jumpstart a peace process with a smaller rebel group called the ELN. And surely they must be looking to see what happens, because if in the future the peace deal with the FARC were to be radically changed, the ELN must surely be wondering exactly how much they can trust the word of the Colombian government. So, Toby, voters going to the polls tomorrow. What are you thinking? Well, if we follow Colombia's um, opinion polls, it looks like the two most extreme candidates, Gustavo Petro and Ivan Duque, will go on to a second round of voting. Colombia's system is thus. In the first round of voting, you need to win an outright majority, so 50% plus one vote. According to the opinion polls, which I should say are notoriously unreliable in Colombia, but that's all we've got, no one looks set to win that majority. That means these two candidates would go forward and there would be a runoff in June. But there's going to be a lot of pressure on the four candidates who were in tomorrow's election to rally around the one remaining candidate who does support this peace deal because they will be saying the history of Colombia, the history of this uh, peace process will be at stake in this election.